Uh, I can explain. This video is just going to be a nice and easy one. I'll be experimenting in some design aspects I just learned about to make a cool 3D print. I hope to maybe teach or inspire you to do something and for sure to learn something myself. Enjoy me stumbling through it. I've got some other irons in the fire right now, things that I'd like to create and put time and effort into, so I apologize if this feels a little fillery. It's just I'd like to keep the flow of videos up. It's that and ordering and shipping parts takes time and then I only get paid every two weeks. Oh, and I've got a couple more subscribers now than last video. Just, just a couple more. Hello. I'd like to keep this video as separate from my previous one as much as possible, but there are a few announcements and things I'd like to talk about pertaining to that video at the end of this one. So if you're interested in that, I'll see you there. I'm gonna make this better. This is my side desk where I do a lot of assemblies and overhead shots. It's great, it takes a pounding as you know, the only problem is there's just not much room. I end up having to kind of musical chairs these dryer racks around that I've turned into shelves when I want to get a cool overhead shot. I don't want to scoot the desks back from the wall because I already have limited space from having two desks in the first place, so I need to find a way to optimize it. A product of this is me always having to break my neck to check the screen and make sure that everything is in focus. If for whatever reason the autofocus doesn't work, I have to reshoot or lose a whole section of video. So, how am I going to fix this? This. I want to turn these little dryer racks into shelves and put them on the wall and make more desk space. I'm also going to add a cheap 7 inch LCD monitor that's connected to the camera so I can see what it sees from down here. All of this to speed up filming. The faster I film, the faster I can get footage out to my editor and the faster he can get it out to you. Now the brackets that I'm going to be using to turn the drying racks into shelves could just be a simple piece of angle that you buy from the hardware store, but if you thought I was going to do that then welcome to the channel. The design method that I'll be trying out today is called topology. Now, what is topology? The study of geometric properties and spatial relations unaffected by- I have a good way of explaining what a topology study is and how a 3D modeling program performs what's called a topology study, but first I need a bridge. This explanation is going to be a little bit overkill, but it's the way that I explained it to my friends and it seemed to make sense to them. Just imagine back to middle school or even elementary school science class. We all remember being given the task to construct a bridge or some sort of supporting structure out of either straws, popsicle sticks, or noodles. And with those items you were given some sort of constraint, be it the number of construction pieces, the overall size the support piece had to be contained within, or the mass that it has to carry. So you have your bridge or some sort of support structure constructed and it's that time to put the 10 pound, 20 pound weight on top of it and you just hope it holds. You set it on top and it works. But what if your teacher came up and said, hey, you used too many popsicle sticks. Now imagine you're in your early 20s and your teacher's now your boss and he's mad at you that the simple bracket you were supposed to design now weighs 118 pounds and costs $942 in materials. <sighs> Back to the bridge. So you go through and grab random legs, ones that don't look like they're even touching the ground, wiggle them, and any of them that aren't really load supporting, you snap off. You continue doing this until the only ones left are essential and critical to support the mass. Either that or you pull one too many and find out that last leg you pulled was actually load bearing. And this is what SolidWorks does. You design a part, you give it the constraints, how much weight it needs to hold, where the forces are going to act, and then it runs iteration after iteration finding out what pieces or how much of the original structure are essential for it to hold. This is great for 3D printing because it saves material, thus saving printing time and it's less wasteful. Plus it ends up looking pretty cool. I need to make a base model in CAD, so first things first, I need to get dimensions of the shelves. Or shelves as they are now. Alright, so I've gone ahead and made the model that I'm going to use to be just the bracket and put a little hole in it for a screw to go through, just something like that. Like I said before, this model as it is right now is perfectly fine. If you printed this out and used it as a bracket, it would be great. But that's not what I want to do on this channel. I want to add a little bit of engineering flair to it and do something that I just learned about myself, that topology study. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I go to SolidWorks add-ins, simulation, new study, topology study. I'm going to go to goals and constraints and I'm going to get the best stiffness to weight ratio. So when it runs the simulation, it's going to try to find how to keep its rigidity while taking away material. I'll do a reduction of mass of just the basic 30%. External load, I'm just going to put it at 10 pounds on each, 20 pounds for the shelf, just for this. Fixed geometry, this is where it's going to be put against the wall. 
here. Now I'm going to go into manufacturing controls and this is where I can define what I don't want the model to take away from. There's certain sections like where the screw goes or where I need the little clip at the end to be where I don't want those pieces taken out otherwise it'll jeopardize the other things I need from the structure like something to keep the rack from sliding forward. Another thing I'm going to do to satisfy my OCD is add a symmetry plane. It's just a plane that goes right through the middle. It'll make this side the same as this side. It, it's symmetry. All right, I'll just click run. Material not defined. Crap. For the material, I'm just going to define it as ABS, just some sort of plastic, whichever one is random. And now I'm going to run the study. Okay, it's finally done. All right, let's look at the initial one pretty cool so you can see where it took away the non-essential material another cool thing that you can do is you can see how far you can go right now there's a percentage of original mass is 72 percent so i've taken away almost 30 percent of my print and i can keep it going and you can see how much more it'll take away and then you know the stiffness how rigid it is will decrease as you go. Look at that thing. <laughs> All right, I don't think I'm gonna go that extreme. I'll wind it back a little bit. All right, well, this ended up looking pretty cool. It took some pieces out here, and you can see how smooth, and it just took entire chunks off of this plane. Like, you can see how thick it was before versus how it is now. Pretty neat. I'm gonna save this as an STL now and load it into my slicer program, comparing the two parts to see how much faster the print with the topology study is compared to the basic one and also the difference in material requirements. I've got the original part loaded up in my slicer program and I can see that it'll take 30.59 grams and the print time of two hours and 41 minutes for one bracket. All right, so I dragged and dropped in the new part, just placed it as it automatically wanted to be placed and the PLA, it's it's gonna take 26.08 grams compared to the 30 something and the print time went from 241 to 237 so a couple minutes faster it could just be that my printer's slow hey it saved some material and I think it looks pretty cool yo so while recording this I wasn't able to print because there was an update for MakerBot but look at how much better the graphics quality looks now like that looks like like look out Unreal Engine oh check this out they came out looking nice the angle brackets ended up looking pretty cool. Because of the limitations on the 3D printer, the bottom pieces ended up looking like a topographical map, and the top pieces look kind of alien. They function pretty well as they do hold up the shelf. As an added benefit, I get this cool camera angle that I have now. Well, this just looks weird. I know earlier I said that I was going to make an announcement at the end of this video, but I got a little too excited and ended up releasing it as a separate video early, so I'll put that up in the cards or linked at the end of this video if you want to check it out. If you don't have time to check out that video, then if you could just drop a like on this video, maybe hit the subscribe button if you want to support me and hit the notification bell because subscribe button doesn't actually do anything anymore. I thank each and every one of you for watching this video and I hope you learned something. Maybe you can implement this in some of your prints to save a little bit of time and material or I at least hope that I entertained you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next video.